when it's when you've done what you can, then I will do what's necessary. Right, right. Yeah, that's uh that's kinda like with the with the COVID thing. I was just talking about how I found in that video the COVID curve that the US went through. You know, like and it's a ten year old video that I have. Um it was the one where I don't know if you remember where I told you that I woke up in the morning and there was a fish symbol glowing on my door. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the belly of that fish was the pattern of our the first start of our COVID curve. And uh, when I first saw it, all the all the other things of history kind of clicked in for me, as to say that you know this has already happened you know, or something similar in Egypt, uh, by however you want to look at it, a clock, coincidence, or whatever, we are in these lands, again, uh, lands that are not ours for exactly 400 years and so on, except that in this case, where uh, where we were warned uh, in, you know, in Egypt and took it to heart and then hid from it to try and, you know, cure COVID, we went... You know, we are like, uh, took it like the Egyptians. Uh, some people hid, some people quarantined, but for the most part, you know, we just kind of went willy-nilly crazy wherever we wanted to go and wound up spreading the thing. I mean, just like the logic of standing in a line full of sick people and, you know, potentially infecting yourself by breathing whatever it is that they have. I mean... To me, that's kind of going against the Deuteronomy laws of, you know, messing your hair up and saying unclean, unclean, and then just staying away from people just for the sake of that. I mean, I know that God can protect by maybe controlling the air around you and so on, and maybe he even did that for some people that were bold and stupid. I know there's times, Ray, have you ever done anything stupid and you knew it was stupid, but because you were just so in love with God and acting like a goofball, he still protected you anyway, even though... Well, driving through a truck is as stupid as you can get. Driving where? Driving through a truck. Oh, driving through. What do you mean driving through? Purposely, purposely hitting the gas to drive through the truck. Uh, I don't know if I heard this story. <laughs> should I should I disconnect the video so there's no evidence? They might take away your driver's license or something. <laughs> I, I I think I told you about years ago when it was we had heavy snow and I got my car stuck and then I got a second car trying to pull it out and got that stuck. Oh boy! And got a third car, got a third car stuck. And when I finally got that third car unstuck, I drove it right out the driveway. It's big. Four-wheel drive truck was coming down the road. I said, I was so disgusted. Something just keep right on going, but it's going to drive all right through that truck. And I get the gas. It wound up somehow still driving down the road. So you're saying but, it looked as if you went through a truck? Exactly. Somehow we missed. It was like something faded out. And I was... On the other side of that truck driving down the road. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, how do you explain that away? I mean, you, if, if you're, if you're flying at something and you're going to hit it, you know what I mean? How do you, how does it get in front of you to that point? I mean, I'm sure you probably, I mean, you know, did, let me ask you this. And I find this to be interesting in my life. Did you cry out the, oh, God, help me, or oh, my God, or anything nope. when when it happened? Nope. I said, I'm just, just going to drive right through that truck. That's exactly how I felt. I was so upset. I said, I'm going to drive this car right through that truck. And somehow it happened. Yeah, and that's not the. You're not the first person to give me a story like that. I mean, um, uh, I have a friend, Claudia. She's a, a realtor. Out in, uh, of all places, uh, when I first moved here, I didn't know how to pronounce some of the cities and towns. 
And so I used to call Olean, I used to call it Olean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like doom. Well, that people really got a good laugh out of that, you know, I mean like, well, this guy's not from around here obviously. But um she's a realtor out there. And she told me that one time she was uh going around the bend on a, and she had looked down and realized that, you know, she was fiddling with something in her car, looked down, and then literally then turns around and, uh, sorry, I'm going to roll up a window so I can get the, so she, uh, she said she's going down the road. She had just fiddled with her radio or something like that. And so then when she kind of looks up, you know, she notices that there's another car coming and this guy is also across the double yellow. You know, she looked up and realized that she had was going around a bend and she cut it a little too hard. So she's now over the double yellow and looks up just in time to see another car coming. And she can see that he's over the double yellow in her direction. So that both these cars are coming at each other like that. And she said all she did was she... You know, she cried out to God and just kind of turned her head as to say, you know, this is it, right? And then she said that uh, nothing, you know, she's like, it didn't happen. And she said that she, you know, she just immediately looked in her mirror to see, you know, what happened, where that other car go. And she was still over the double yellow. And the other car in the rear view mirror, you know, in her side mirror as she watched it trailing away, it was also over the double yellow. So it's like, how how did that happen, right? I mean, uh, right. how was it that physically two objects could, that should have collided and hit each other just, you know, pass each other mysteriously, defying all the laws of what we know of this reality? And that's where um, there's something about this place, uh, God's creation, that, you know, there's a power here that transcends and goes beyond what we know is the physical. And, you know, the scriptures that's, tell us about it, and we've got a few stories here and there. That's why it's that guy at work didn't see the guy run over the top of me with that forklift and that load of steel. I would have never known that that's what happened. He said he was so shocked when I came walking around the back of that forklift. He said, it's impossible. He never stopped. He drove right over the spot where you were standing. And then you came walking from behind me. I don't know how that happened. I said, that never happened. He stopped. No, no, he never did. Yeah. And I mean, I think well, that I think yeah. that you have a spirit around you, dude. <laughs> there's something about there's something about uh you and possibly maybe even the way just the way that you think of God, right? That uh he's so real to you. Um That, I don't know, the the things that uh, would be, um, let me, I'm going to start my car and drive around. I need to, I don't know, man, I got some weird smell. I don't know if the smells in my car, I got to vacuum this thing out, but it's terrible. <laughs> um, but like, I think that there is some kind of a spirit around you because you, uh, you just have too many stories like this, you know, um, and I know, I know for a fact that, you know, 